Sunday. Now, in high definition, live, local, late breaking. This is KOLD News 13, live. Every time I think of, of the six that were lost forever, um, it, it chokes me up. Tonight, we are getting our first look at the plans for the January 8th Memorial in Presidio Park. Four teams presented their designs tonight, and you can see them right here behind us. This is the first time the public is getting a look at the memorial to honor the six people killed, along with the 13 who were hurt, including former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. KOLD News 13's J.D. Wallace was at the meeting where the teams made their presentations and explained why their designs should be chosen. J.D.? And, you know, El Presidio Park could be looking a lot different in a few years based on these designs. You know, tonight the designers gave their public presentations of their work. However, the, their materials will still be available for the public to view and then to also give their opinions about those, those designs. Now, each team had 20 minutes to explain their design and why they chose certain features. The room was full tonight. People had to stand along the edges. It was especially quiet for each presentation, too. You're looking at just a sampling of the work from each of the four finalists. Now, these are visions for the permanent memorial and master plan for El Presidio Park. The teams explained their concepts with a site plan, memorial location, and area for events and public use. Designers often explained that remembering that day will tie into giving El Presidio new purpose, and some of the survivors of that day have stayed a part of this process. Every time I think of, of the six that were lost forever, um, it, it, it chokes me up. And just walking around the community knowing that uh, we've had the support is part of the healing process. I think we need a place, a special place, where we can relieve ourselves of those feelings and try to put them to rest. I think uh, there's some elements from some which uh, I like that one, but I like this aspect over here. And the materials can be viewed by the public. Even the videos w that they use tonight will be with these materials at least by Monday, if not sooner. And also, once the public sees these, they can also offer their comments and tell which design they prefer the most. That public comment period will go for 30 days, and the foundation is expected to make its selection in about a month and a half. Reporting live from downtown, J.D. Wallace, KOLD News 13, live local late breaking. Thank you, J.D. Late breaking news now. The Tucson Police Department has added new charges against the two people accused of stealing chalices from local churches. Bridget Baker and her son Andrew Hoke are now accused of stealing from a synagogue after police say items taken back in February were found in their possession. Police have added a criminal damage charge for each of them. The couple were arrested last month after they were caught on surveillance video. They're suspected of stealing chalices from three Catholic churches. Police say two of the chalices have been returned. Kevin. All right, Dan, thanks a lot. Well, the winds are much lighter tonight, and it feels comfortable outside. We're talking temperatures still around 70 degrees around parts of uh, Tucson. U of A still around 70. Vail, 65. Marana also at 65 degrees. Oracle and Wilcox are already in the 50s now, but winds are much, much lighter. A 5 or 10 mile per hour breeze out of the southwest and the south overnight. It's been mostly clear, but a few more clouds are on the way. But it has still been extremely dry and extremely windy in the afternoons. I'm going to have the forecast in late. You know how windy it could be later on this weekend. And speaking of the winds and dry weather, Heather, I'll toss it back to you. All right. Thanks, Kevin. This is just into our newsroom. Within the last half hour, the Cochise County Sheriff's Office is investigating the cause of four fires that popped up earlier this evening. They all happened in the same area off the side of Highway 92 near Valley View School in Palominas. The fires closed down the highway. All four were put out at 7.30 this evening, although we still don't know if this had anything to do with the wind or what caused it, but we're waiting on word. An investigation is underway. Well, did you know what you're responsible for when it comes to brush and weeds on your property? And do you know what you could be fined if you don't comply? With fire season officially starting this week, the city and the county are taking the threat of brush fires very seriously seriously. KLD News 13, Sonu Wasu has what you need to know. She's joining us now live with that story. Sonu? 
Yeah, Heather, Dan, we are live at the CDO wash on the northwest side, which, as you can see, is overrun by brush and weeds. Firefighters say this is a big fire hazard, especially when these weeds are close to your property. While homeowners are responsible for their own cleanup, we wanted to know who's responsible for cleanup on this public land. Take a look at this. Among the overgrown mess, a site that would make firefighters and homeowners cringe. We found cigarette butts embedded in the tall grass. With the hot, dry weather, firefighters say these areas will be a tinderbox waiting to explode. Many homeowners we spoke to are extremely frustrated. They tell me that cities and counties are not wasting any time inciting residents, but when it comes to their own property, there seems to be no sense of urgency. We asked firefighters if they thought sites like these were a fire hazard in our community. We also spoke to residents who say despite their calls and complaints, the weeds continue to grow out of control on public land. It's a mess. It's. I've been complaining about it for about a year and a half now. I've talked to the county three times. What did the county say? It's Miranda's problem. And what does Miranda say? Miranda says it's the county's problem. But what's your message to public officials, whichever agency is responsible? Get off your butts and do your job. We're seeing areas that are overgrown, a lot of weeds, and we're thinking, you know, that's going to be a hot spot. If that catches fire, how are we going to get into that area? Now, we made some calls to find out who is responsible for weed control. In the county, we are learning flood control is in charge of washes. Private property owners in charge of their own lots. In the city, officials say property owners also responsible for removing weeds from their property, including out to the curb on every street and to the middle of the adjacent alley. Now, since we started making calls today, we did hear back from county officials. They tell me they plan to send flood control officials out to these uh, area washes to check it out, inspect that, and to start weed control as soon as possible as it is a fire danger. Reporting live on the northwest side, Sonu Wasu, KOLD News 13, live local, late breaking. All right, thanks, Sonu. The daughter of Jerice Hunter, the woman accused of killing her five-year-old, testified in court today. She looked like she was like weak and like she was still moving, but she wasn't really moving that much. That is what the 17-year-old said about the last time that she saw Jesse Shockley. Months after she was reported missing, the daughter came forward to police. The girl said she saw Jesse in the closet a week before she was reported missing. She said that Hunter would punish Jesse by taking her into the master bedroom, spanking her, and then forcing the five-year-old into the closet. But she also defended her mom, saying that she's not a bad person. Repaving on Grant Road will continue tomorrow. Earlier today, crews ripped up the old asphalt to get it ready to lay back down again. Then another layer of fresh asphalt will go on top of that. There will be three miles of repaving from Santa Rita to Columbus. The hope is that we'll see a brand new Grant Road by the end of this month, at least for that three-mile stretch. Davis Moth and Air Crews and aircraft recently sent to Europe are on the move again. After about a month of training in England and Germany, 12 A-10 jets and about 200 airmen and support equipment are now in Romania. That's in Eastern Europe. It's part of a series of American troop deployments and training exercises meant to show strength and response to the situation happening in Ukraine. The Pentagon said this is the first ever deployment of A-10s to Romania, and they are expected to be there for about three months. More than 100 people we are learning have died in that shootout on a college campus in Kenya. Officials in Kenya are confirming that the attack was carried out by Al-Shabaab gunmen. 147 people died, along with four of the attackers. Most of the people killed were students, but two police officers and one soldier and two watchmen also died in the attack. The attack now surpasses the 67 who were killed in Al-Shabaab's attack on the Westgate Mall in Nairobi in September of 2013. All of the remains of the 150 people on board the German wing's plane that crashed last week in the French Alps have been identified. Search crews also found the plane's second black box, the flight data recorder. Investigators say the pilot, Andres Lubitz, had been searching for information on suicide methods and on cockpit security in the days before the flight. They believe that he deliberately crashed the plane. President Barack Obama saying tonight the United States and its negotiating partners have reached an historic understanding with Iran over its nuclear program. President Obama speaking shortly after negotiators in Switzerland announced an understanding outlining limits on Iran's nuclear program. He says that if the framework leads to a final deal, it will make the United States and the world safer.
If you thought the autism statistics were high before, you may be surprised to find out the latest numbers on autistic children. The 1 in 150 statistic has changed dramatically. Coming up, the numbers now and what Southern Arizona is doing to connect children and their families. Also coming up, it is not nice or thoughtful or caring to anyone involved. The Easter don't coming up next. KLB News 13 Live at 10 continues for your neighborhood on this Thursday night. I'm Heather Rowe. And I'm Dan Maris. Right now on the Tucson News Now mobile app, Snapchat has released its first transparency report to law enforcement. It's proof that if needed, those videos and pics do live forever. Don't forget to download the app. Search Tucson News Now, all one word, no spaces, in your app store. We'll be right back. The 